our last uh, presentation in this uh, morning, morning session that is called uh, science, uh, where we are discussing art and science, is by Pixel Boy. I know Pixel Boy since two years, that, since the time where Herbert and I, we, we met um, the Twitter, uh, we, we went into the Twitter world and got in touch with all these many young people uh, that, uh, that are doing art now in the blockchain and, and, and make NFT. And um, to be open, I, I learned uh, only a few weeks ago that Pixel Boy also has a real name. <laughs> It's Jeremy Walker, just to let you know, but he wants to keep it uh, mainly um, in the back, so we will stay with Pixel Boy from now on. <laughs> um, he is a computer scientist and a crypto art pioneer. His tribute work for Herbert uh, was called <coughs> Infinite Glitter. And this animation, of course, reminded me of the Carl Sims classic particle animation in the 80s, William also mentioned yesterday, and we saw uh, yesterday also in the evening animation performance. And uh, so I thought it would, might be interesting for us uh, to hear from him something about particles in science and art. So Pixel Boy, many thanks. I'm very happy that you will come here. Yeah, thanks ever so much for, for the introduction. Um, I'd also like to thank um, on behalf of all of the artists of our generation, um, the pioneers that we heard uh, yesterday, all of the hard work that they put in um, to allow us to, to do what we do. So, you know, seeing their world of punch cards and, and mainframes, and, and I'm able to do uh, my work from, from home. Um, and we massively uh, do not underestimate the, the work that was put in by those pioneers to allow us to do that. Um, so I am a generative artist, and I use uh, predominantly P5.js uh, and a piece of software called Pico8, which I'll uh, show you later on. I'm from Liverpool in England, and I have a, a passion for exploring the intersection of science and art. So um, we're going to just go through quickly what we're covering. So uh, particles, the, the fundamental building blocks of the universe. We're going to discuss particle theory briefly. Um, we're going to discuss the role of particles in science, uh, the influence on art, and then we're going to look at some pieces of art um, that use uh, particles. Big program. Big program. Big program. Little time. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, we can do this. We can do this. Um, let's go. Right, so um, we've got up here an image of the Lasso cave paintings, um, where pigments were used 15 thousand to seventeen thousand years ago on, on rock um, and literally they're particles which have stood the test of time um, so uh, they rendered using earth pigments uh, such as red and yellow ochre and iron oxides things like charcoal from burnt wood and calcium carbonate from chalk so literally using all animals vegetables and minerals essentially uh, as so all forms of particles to create art um, now beyond Europe uh, there's Aboriginal rock art um, so in, in Australia, and then the ancient petroglyphs in uh, Americas. And then I recently found, I don't know if anyone caught the news the last couple of days ago, uh, that uh, caves in Indonesia um, were found to predate uh, 6,000 years than they thought. So caves in, in, in Indonesia that predate uh, these, uh, these pieces. And I feel that they're global expressions highlighting a shared human endeavor to capture and communicate experiences through the medium of particles. So the next um, image is, uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with, The Girl with the Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. Um, and I think the most important thing for me uh, is not necessarily the, the pearl earring, but the, the most expensive part of the image is the ultramarine headscarf she's wearing, um, because the, the particles that were used, the, the, the paint that was used, is lapis lazuli, um, which was extremely difficult to, uh, to get hold of in, in the 17th century. Um, so it was only mined in Afghanistan, um, or predominantly only mined in, in Afghanistan. Um, and of course, a limited resource and used in the, the Taj Mahal. Um, so a real sign uh, signification of, of opulence. So why I'm saying this is it's the importance of uh, selecting the, the very best dyes for, for pigments, for uh, vibrancy or for longevity. 
And in the modern day, it's a bit like choosing which ink we use uh, or using museum glass to make sure that there's no reaction from, from light and air. So um, very briefly, uh, um, without overdoing what's been, been said on, on uh, physics, which I'm not an expert on, um, I'm going to cover uh, briefly particle theory. Um, so a particle is a small localized object which can be described by various physical properties such as volume, density, or mass. We've got elementary particles, quarks, leptons, and bosons, and the composite particles of atoms, molecules, and ions. Now, there are a couple of theories that I do want to mention briefly. Um, so first of all, we've got wave-particle duality. So that's where objects such as light and, uh, well, such as light have both wave-like and particle-like characteristics at the same time. And also briefly want to mention superposition. So that's where um, particles are able to exist in multiple states, states simultaneously. So um, Schrodinger's cat paradox is the, the most obvious example where a cat in a box is simultaneously alive and dead critically until it's observed. Uh, so uh, moving on, so I uh, want to briefly talk about cellular automata. Um, so cellular automata is a discrete model defined on uh, a grid of cells where each cell typically has got a finite number of states. It evolves through discrete time steps according to a set of rules based on the states of its neighboring cells. And these rules determine the state of each cell in the next step based on its current state and also on the states of its neighbors. Cellular automata are often used to study complex systems and emergent phenomena and they demonstrate how local interactions can give rise to global patterns and behavior. Um, so this image here is a, a, an example from a textbook, and then uh, people have sort of pushed the algorithm. So uh, this image is by uh, an artist called uh, Toxy, who has pushed that algorithm uh, and added uh, more, more color to, uh, to create a more uh, dynamic uh, piece of art. And then uh, we have an image by myself, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Right, um, yeah, so this is uh, an image that I made uh, on, of a cellular automaton. Uh, and basically what we're doing here, at the end of each line, um, we're allowing, um, I call it a mutating cellular automata. So we're allowing the, the chance of the rules to change. Uh, and I think it makes quite a nice uh, piece, of, piece of art. So I'm also going to cover Conway's Game of Life. Um, and so what we're going to say here, so... Um, it's a, it's a grid, um, it's a 2D cellular automaton um, devised by Conway, of course, John Horton Conway, and it consists of a grid of cells that can either be alive or dead. So alive black, uh, dead white. And the evolution of the grid is determined by a very simple set of rules applied to each cell. So uh, the rules, uh, fairly simple. So um, a live cell with two or three neighbors survives. A dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes alive. And in all other cases, a cell dies or remains dead. So on the top left center, um, we've got um, the, the center square. So on the top left, the center square dies uh, through loneliness. I mean, what, what a sad way to go. Uh, then next uh, on the top right, um, we've got the cell that survives because it's got two neighbors. Um, we've got uh, at, at the very bottom a cell which is dying because it has uh, four neighbors. And then my favorite, um, which is the, the bottom right where we get the, the rebirth because it's got exactly three cells. So from these fairly simple rules, we can get um, some, some quite um, exciting uh, results from it. So uh, what you see here uh, on, on the video um, is that um, we've got um, incredibly complex and diverse patterns coming. So there's things like still lifes and oscillators and spaceships, and there's lots and lots of people have looked um, into these different um, results and, and created some quite fascinating um, outputs from it. Um, so simple rules can produce complex and unexpected behaviors. Uh, I've seen further examples where there's a scale of life, so rather than just using zero and one, um, they use a figure between zero and one based on multiple wider neighbors. Um, so a bit like a Gaussian blur um, where um, it's, a, uh, it's much more like observing uh, microbiological life. Um, so onto the role of uh, particles. Um, so um, 
particle physics is the study of fundamental particles and their interactions. Uh, studying particles helps us to comprehend the, the forces and interactions that govern the natural world. So uh, we've got the Large Hadron Collider, which is used to uh, explore particle physics by colliding particles at high energies. Um, and it's the closest to uh, the start of the Big Bang that we can create. Um, and then uh, Stephen Hawking said, the discovery of the Higgs boson is the triumph of human ingenuity. And uh, we've got photons that are essential understanding light and electromagnetic radiation. And they're crucial for technologies ranging from medical imaging, telecommunications, and quantum computing. So if we look at further science, um, Particles such as electrons play a crucial part in chemical reactions and in the structure of molecules. Um, so DNA is composed of atoms bonded together. And in astrophysics, uh, the, the Big Bang Theory, uh, cosmic rays and neutrinos, it's the particles that provide an insight into astrophysical phenomenon. Central, so particles are central to understanding the universe's origin and evolution. And I feel that particles, they may be the smallest elements in the universe, but they hold the key to unlocking its greatest secrets. So the, the mysterious and intriguing nature of art has, has long captivated the imagination of artists. So both science and art seek to understand the interpret and, and interpret the world around us. Particles have been represented in many ways uh, for, for more literal representation of particle collisions, covering both the microscopic world and subatomic particles to dynamic simulations of particle systems in space. Through the animation we saw uh, last night with Particle Dreams by Carl Sims, and even into um, pontalism and stippling effects that we see in traditional art from the likes of Georges Seurat and Paul Signac. So there's a key role in digital tools in visualizing complex outputs. And um, so some of those uh, pieces that we see, so that we've got the particle collisions of smoke, fire, water. Um, and if we look at the simulization and visualization, so uh, if we look at perhaps flocking, um, the example we saw yesterday of people on the fly, the particles following the, those people as they walk around, um, the uh, nature of ants as they move and also how they, they grow their colonies and into growth of coral and, and dendrites as well. So, um, Particles in art, so I, I'm taking this as a very broad subject because particles cover all art. Um, and Jackson Pollock, uh, in this example, his drip paintings, and I, I feel that he shows a real um, understanding and appreciation of fluid dynamics, um, the way that he avoids loops of paint uh, from being produced. Uh, so if you, if you run a paint um, slowly, or if you go back on yourself, you'll create a loop. Uh, Jackson Pollock doesn't do that, so I think he shows the understanding of fluid dynamics in his work. Um, if we look at the works of uh, Refik Anadol, he uses machine learning um, to create immersive environments that transform data into abstract visualizations. And he uses large data sets to, to do that, to create these audiovisual experiences. And they, I feel like they challenge our perceptions and invite us to ponder the nature of uh, reality and memory. And we can also use pixels as particles. What we've got here is a piece of artwork that I made in Pico 8. So Pico 8 is a piece of software where you get a grid of 128 by 128. Um, and you only get a grid of 16 colors. So you've got to be quite clever with what you do. Um, so this is a piece of work I made um, that, that does that. Uh, and it's a repeating GIF, of course. Here's a piece by um, Andy Goldsworthy. Um, and I, he creates pieces using uh, natural materials and, and fractal-like images. Um, so I think that's a fantastic piece of work um, in, from 1987 uh, called Rowan Leaves and Hull. We've got um, a piece of sculpture that I want to show you next uh, by Anthony Gormley. Um, so this is shown in London by the O2 and it's called Quantum Clouds. So it's where he, um, it's based on quantum mechanics and it shows the aura of a person. And uh, briefly I want to show you Infinite Glitter, uh, the work that I did uh, as a tribute to, to Herbert. And again, I want to show you a piece of my, uh, one of my GIFs that was done on uh, Pico 8, uh, if it will come through. Uh, so yeah, so this is just a, a simple ripple effect. Um, but the, the thing I love about um, Pico 8 is it's so restrictive in nature that you have to be clever about how you, how you use those particles. Um, 
So I thought that was finished there with the art side of things, uh, but then two weeks ago, uh, FX Hash produced uh, a, a piece uh, by artist Bjorn Stahl called Entangles, Entangled, sorry, um, which uses a quark and an anti-quark pair across two blockchains. And if you haven't seen this piece, you should, you should go and take a look at it. Um, you can move the, the various uh, windows around and, and they interact together. Um, so I am going to leave it there just to say there's a whole future um, of uh, particles that, that can be um, discovered and um, things like the, the blockchain um, where I feel that we're kind of working uh, together. So we're sending particles from one part of the world to the other um, and so you put things on one screen and you go to the next screen, it looks exactly the same. So that's just particles being, in my opinion, sent right across the, the globe. Um, so I hope as we continue to explore uh, the frontiers of knowledge and creativity uh, that I've inspired you to consider the beauty and complexity of particles. So thanks everyone for your time.